I was intending for this to be a nice how-to video on making a tin can stove, but due to a disappointing final product and issues with the process, it does not work well as that. Due to the length of the video and just the general disappointment, I've, dis I've put less effort into the edit. If you'd like to make one of these yourself, the basic steps are finding the cans, which can be quite hard, creating the fuel air intake, cutting a hole for that, attaching the two cans together, and making exhaust vent holes. These are two tin can stoves that we've um, made in the past. This is the first one and you can see there isn't quite enough air out that so we've had tried to add wire but we end up having to use sticks. And this is a design where you have this one shows it better because this is just old and gotten kind of a little bit beat up. So you have a design of like an outer can which can be various sizes. This is like this is a number 10 can which I'll be showing how to do from because that's what we have around. Well this is more like a coffee can sized one. And then an inner can which is like the fire chamber. And and then like a feeding tube with a air inlet and a wood inlet from small sticks. And this also allows you to rake out coals if they've built up over time. And so you can keep running this without having to stop it and dump out coals. Um, and these can kind of all be modified based on what cans you have. But the, the chamber that you're making this in, um, this is going to be... You can't make it that much smaller than this. You can make it a little bit smaller, but if it gets too small, it just there can't be enough fuel in there to keep it going. Um, and the one thing you do have to consider is that this will have sharp edges when you're done. There are also much simpler designs with basically like an inlet feeding tube and an outer can. Um, I prefer this because I think it kind of focuses the fire. Um, but if you want to go through less work, um, you can see those. And the other, I haven't made this this a tin can stove in a while, so you might see some kind of mistakes, and because I I just don't remember exactly how to do it, but I I know the general process. To make the tin can stove, you're going to need um, some tin cans, of course, and some tools. First, the disposable materials. The outside can is. A number 10 can which is six inches in diameter and seven inches tall. The firebox can um, is four inches in diameter and um, five inches tall and this one is the same height which is the feeder tube and it's about three and a quarter in diameter and these diameters can vary but these are just the cans I found around and uh, these are diameters which work. Um, you also need a top, um, which comes from this can, though a top from this can would could also work. Um, the tools you'll need is a uh, can opener, uh, a very dull chisel, some pliers, uh, some screwdrivers, flathead, a church tool, just a punch nail, a hammer. Um, you also need just some various wire um, and that will be used to some degree used up and then just a piece of wood to go in the middle to punch against and just another block to punch against. The first step is making the feeder tube and you'll need to figure out how to operate the can opener. Oh, it's like this. Um, you'll need to take the end off and that can be discarded and then you need to turn this into kind of a rectangle Turning this into a rectangle is optional, but it makes the next couple steps easier.
So then we want to add a shelf in this and you can put it about halfway and this is to allow airflow and, and scooping out coals underneath while allowing feeding um, in through the top. And you can put it about halfway, it should be a little bit further down but it'll bend down over use. And to do this you'll cut it to the width of it and then have little tabs and cut little holes in the side to fit those tabs through. And you are handling sharp metal so make sure to wear gloves. That fits inside and then you're going to use your dull chisel to punch some holes in the side for the the shelf. That one fits in there. And then to make one right across from it. And you need to little fiddle these little tabs in, which is quite hard. Maybe expand this and then get it in. And then crunch it back together. As you can see, a lot of this is just fiddling with the metal until it kind of works. So now we have the intake tube. So the next job is to uh, punch a hole in this so we can fit it into the kind of the outer burning chamber. Forgot that you'll need to get a permanent marker or something to fix it to kind of show where it goes. In this case you could use the nail to punch it but because we're near an edge I'm going to use this church tool to put a punch into this The other thing is these edges should be bent in a little bit because this this is part of the stove where you'll be kind of exposed to it and you don't really want sharp edges poking out. So the next step is doing the same with this second can. Um, so that works well. And you don't have to um, pull these edges in since it will be hidden inside of this one. So the next step is to line everything up, fit this piece of wood in here, and flip it upside down so you can punch some holes in it. So you can wire the cans together. So I've attached that with wire. I had two types of wire. I think one was aluminum and one was steel. Um, so I used one of each to just make sure that that worked. And you could, hope this fits in here, you could have some sort of tab system to prevent this from um, going further in, but uh, we prefer to have it so you can pack it in and make it um, more compact for travel. 
what I am actually this this is the direction it should go um, what I am going to do is make a little tab so it can't come out further so this I'm seeing is pretty loose um, it really shouldn't be that loose I maybe got a bit too enthusiastic with cutting stuff out um, because it wasn't fitting in at first um, but I could probably afterwards work on folding some in or using some wire to make it a little bit more sturdy uh, but the next step is cutting vent holes um, for the smoke to come out while resting a pot on this rim and this is really important and you should make them as close together as you can without compromising the structure So this is, so far, kind of the finished product. I'll probably work on making this a little bit more stable and less jumping around. Um, but, yeah, I'll see how it works soon.